one such sabha that you are seeing right now is of Devendra Fadnavis addressing the party workers here. This essentially is going to be a litmus test for the former Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis. Over the next half an hour, we'll get you one of the most hard-hitting interviews of Devendra Fadnavis, his interactions with the party workers and how he's emerging as the big leader of the Bharatiya Janta Party here in Maharashtra and Goa. I think in Goa, BJP will form its government. You could see the response in the Sabha. When I spoke to people, people were responding and such response shows people's faith in BJP, people's faith in Modi ji. Very different than your other election rallies? Nothing about the Congress party this time? <laughs> no, not, not in this, this constituency because Congress has no presence in this constituency. We have been on the campaign trail of former Maharashtra Chief Minister Mr. Devendra Fadnavis, who is also the in charge of Goa. What's very interesting that we figured yesterday was in the sabhas that he was carrying out, it almost looked like uh, he is leading this entire uh, charge of the BJP. Many would raise this entire question, draw parallels. At the end of the day, Goa for the longest time was seen with Manohar Parikar loved by many, by his people, known as Manohar Bab. Have they been able to fill the void? What has really changed? What are the big challenges? Uh, on this detailed interview, Mr. Fadnavis, thank you very much for speaking to Republic TV. Let me straight away begin by asking you, Rahul Gandhi was in Goa. He says 2017 mandate was for the Congress party. Bharatiya Janata Party stole the mandate. How do you respond to that? I think, uh, first of all, uh, they should agree that they failed the mandate of people. Having said that, it was not at all a mandate for Congress because if you look at uh, the entire vote, BJP was much ahead in total votes than what Congress got. So the mandate was for BJP, but somehow arithmetic worked out and they got more seats. However, their leadership did not inspire any confidence amongst those who were elected, who were non-BJP and non-Congress. So all of them came to BJP, they joined BJP and BJP could form the government. You call something as a mandate stolen when things happen like what happened in Maharashtra. That is stealing the mandate, not what happened in Goa. Many would say that you take your elections very seriously and despite being the in-charge, you've been camping here, that's what we know. How difficult it has been for you because at the end of the day, we are going into elections without a tall leader like Manohar Parikar, someone who was the reason behind the formidable force that BJP beca became in Goa. I, I totally agree. See, uh, Manohar Bhai's void uh, cannot be filled ever because, you know, he was a absolutely different kind of person. I mean, uh, uh, he, he was common man's uh, chief minister and uh, his intelligence, his, his uh, uh, political acumen, it was absolutely different. However, I was very satisfied to see that although we were worried what would happen to the party after Manor Bhai, but our chief minister, Dr. Pramod Savant, carried the entire show very well. So today, although uh, we feel the void, because this is perhaps the first election when uh, Manor Bhai is not with us, but I think with his inspiration and, uh, you know, the team is trained by him only. So they know how to conduct election. So I think uh, uh, we have tried to do it well. I would like to tell something to the viewers that, you know, when it comes to election campaigning in Goa, it's very different from the other states. There is a very personal co connect. And one thing that uh, I would like all our viewers who are watching this interview is that Devendra Fadnavis is known to take direct questions. 
public here in Goa have been uh, very, uh, you know, forthcoming. They've asked me direct, direct questions. They've asked direct questions to the, uh, you know, former Chief Minister of Maharashtra about corruption in Goa. And I've seen your answers have been very candid. So let me come to this. The public directly asked you that, okay, look here, there was corruption in one of the departments, the PWD department. You never shied away. You said action has been taken. I want you to tell the public who are watching right now. How is it very different? Different, the party with a difference, you are answering all questions. See, uh, first of all, it's, it's, it's our duty to be very forthcoming because this is not Congress, this is BJP. It's a party uh, head, headed by uh, Prime Minister Modi who has always been forthcoming. So, uh, basically, uh, in uh, one of the departments, that is PWD department, uh, while giving the jobs, complaints started pouring in that uh, uh, some corruption is happening and, and uh, jobs are not given on merit and uh, a lot of money is being collected. Immediately we took action, we stopped uh, those jobs, we, 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 we gave stay on those jobs and we asked that minister to step down. And uh, you know, his, his, uh, we also cut his ticket, we did not give him nomination. He is fighting as an independent candidate against our candidate right now. You know, a lot of people would be mistaken, Devendraji, that uh, the moment you keep smiling in all through election, despite how tough it is. But it's not been easy for you. It's been challenging. Let me begin with the challenges. You've had the former Chief Minister of Goa, Lakshmi Khan Parsekar, saying that uh, if I win the elections, Devendra Fadnavish should retire from politics. <laughs> how do you respond to such kind of a direct yeah. attack from your your former colleague? If you I see, uh, he's, he's quite senior to me, and uh, he has been uh, one of the, uh, you know, uh, a sort of founding member of BJP, so uh, I don't want to react in any harsh words, but I think uh, uh, the election results would show who will have to retire. Yeah, you know, I want to ask, now is the perfect time to ask you this question. You've answered this in the past, so I'll, let me make one more attempt. Uh, this Goa elections has also seen some big names, Utpal Parikar being one of them. You've given the rationale behind it. But let me look into the emotion part of it, Devendraji. That is, many would say he's after all the son of the man who's actually made what BJP is in the state of Goa. Your responses or the party's response has been very matter of kind, bereft of the kind of emotions one would have essentially looked into. Will you make the attempt that even after the elections, will you once again, the olive branch would it be handed out to uh, Utpal Parikar, if need be? Let me uh, clarify that we have all sort of emotional relation with the Parikars, with the entire family. Even myself, I had, uh, I had a very emotional relation with uh, uh, Manor Bhai. Uh, he was very close to me. So it is very difficult to take uh, uh, decisions when you have such emotions attached uh, to your decision making. Let me tell you, had there been no uh, there been no emotions attached we would not have offered him three seats and out of those three seats one seat is is a seat where bjp has been winning all through so what we said that yes if you want to contest we want you you are from our family so you contest this seat you will win the seat after five years we'll shift you to panji what else can a party do let me tell you, for BJP, Manohar Bhai's uh, legacy is not a legacy of any individual, whether if whether he is from his family or anybody else. It's a legacy created by BJP. And even Manohar Bhai was a very loyal soldier of BJP. He never, uh, uh, you know, uh, created a legacy uh, which could be uh, used privately. No. It was for public, it was for BJP. So even today, I feel hurt. I feel hurt that we offered, BJP offered Utpal to be a candidate of BJP and Utpal said no. It is not BJP who has said no. It is Utpal who has said no. So you feel disappointed with whatever? Absolutely disappointed, absolutely disappointed and very hurt. Can I then ask you because the optics of it, politics is also about optics. Did you get the optics wrong because you've had the Aam Admi Party, even uh, Cabinet Minister of Maharashtra Aditya Thakri in a press conference today essentially said that look at what has happened to Utpal Parikar, this is how he has been treated. And for whom? Babush Monsurat is a man who's actually facing criminal charges. 
do you think that that optics may have gone wrong, especially defending uh, Babush here versus uh, Utpal? I don't think so because, first of all, let me tell you that Shiva Sena is it has no presence in Goa. It has no relevance in Goa. This party is fighting just to uh, you know save deposit in few of the few of the seats. So I don't think that I have to answer uh, uh, to Aditya Thakre or anybody from Shiv Sena. Having said that, I would like to ask this question who, who, who are saying why Babush? I would like to ask them or tell them who bring Babush to BJP? Manohar Bhai appointed him chairman of the development authority in 2017. He was appointed by Manohar Bhai himself. Manohar Bhai brought him. So, a person who is brought by Manohar Bhai, now you cannot say that uh, after he being uh, supporting your party for three years and you are running government with his support. At this juncture, how can you say that uh, uh, it is wrong to give him a, a nomination? A person who is brought to the party by Manohar Bhai and if to, today Utpal says, he is questioning, uh, uh, you know, the wisdom of uh, Manohar Bhai. But Babush, as I know, since I've covered uh, the state of Goa for over a decade now, Babush has a strong influence, not just in one seat in Panji, we're talking about three to four seats where he has the power. Would you say that uh, somewhere down the line, the BJ BJP had to succumb to that kind of uh, pressure that came in from Babush as far as, if you don't get, give me the seat of Panji, you lose out more in other places. Is that, is I, that the I, I, I absolutely don't think so. There was no pressure. BJP never succumbs to a pressure. Never. This is BJP. But having said that, ultimately there are political equations. And yes, we felt that Babush uh, may be useful in uh, three, four constituencies. He has some uh, clout in three, four constituencies. We are using it. You're talking about political equations, so let's move to the political equations of Goa. That is your former ally, the MGP. I'm told, uh, I've spent some time, I'm told that uh, the alliance with the Trinamool Congress is also a little shaky. My information is, Devendraji, that uh, BJP is still in talks with the B MGP and if need be, you will bring them into the fold. Are talks on open lines with the MGP? See, right now, there are no talks open with MGP. However, I must tell you that it was me who tried level best to bring MGP into alliance. I had many sessions with MGP. It is only for one reason. Politically, our vote bank, we, we, the vote bank word is not, not proper, but still I am using it. We, we share uh, a similar type of vote bank, uh, people uh, uh, with, you know, similar thought process. And that is why we thought that it would be better that uh, uh, both of us come together. However, they chose to go with a party who is totally opposite, you know, their thought process, totally opposite uh, uh, to their ideology, totally opposite. And now they are paying the price. See, their, their electorate, their vote bank or their people who have been consistently voting MGP are absolutely reluctant now to vote to them because they feel that by voting to MGP they are bringing TMC to, be, to, to Goa and the Goans, the people from Goa and especially those who have been voting for MGP, they do not want elements, I am using a word, elements like TMC in Goa. party gave me an interview last evening and in which they made a sensational allegation. The allegation is that there is a tacit understanding between the Bharatiya Janata Party and the Congress. That is the Congress candidate, especially in South Goa, which is a challenge for you, that you contest the elections on the Congress ticket, you win the election, you come to our party. That is the tacit understanding. How do you respond to this? Very entertaining. Mr. Kejriwal and his party is capable of making any stories, any number of stories. And these stories are very entertaining. You see, election is a serious process. 
it's not about storytelling they need to focus on their own election on their own party bjp and congress can never never come together never no tacit understanding absolutely not we don't require tacit understanding yeah, because it's, it's in south goa it's, south goa is a challenge for no, it's, it's, no 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 not nothing is challenge bjp is the only party even in south goa bjp is the only party which is contesting all 40 seats all 40 seats we are not supporting anyone the tacit understanding is between congress and tmc the tacit understanding is between congress and aam aadmi party and there is a tacit understanding between aam aadmi party and tmc all of them are fighting against bjp they are one against bjp let me now come to some of the core issues because you don't you like to talk about core issues about issues of the elections uh, the unemployment being one of, one of them sankal patra you have played a huge focus on unemployment as far as goa is concerned the percentage is about 11.6 this is a question that you had also uh, been asked by the public goa is one of the biggest challenge how are you how are you looking at to reduce that the numbers are to be reduced first of all you know this index is a dynamic index so it it is not a, a very static index or it's a year on year index it's not not the case it's a it's a monthly index it changes so whenever uh, if you look at the covid period and you know it's a it's a tourism economy it's a it's a services sector economy so the entire services sector was hit still the rate is i mean comparably comparably it's 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 low uh, if you c- compare it to other states having said that the focus of bjp has been creating employment it's on creating employment the mopai airport which uh, will start hopefully which will be in operation uh by let's say august 2022 this one airport will double the number of tourists arriving in goa double and uh, i must tell you that uh, uh, before the bjp was in power uh, the number of tourists which uh, used to come to goa was 25 lakh now it is 80 lakh and it may go to 1 crore 60 lakh so that will create huge opportunities that will create a uh, 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 entire new job market and the amount of infrastructure bjp has created in goa anybody who, who has visited goa in last 5 years uh, people are surprised to see the amount of roads uh, uh, road network which has been laid in in goa and and many iconic institutions have have come in goa so all this investment they are creating uh, job opportunities and if you look at our sankalp patra we don't talk about doles we don't say ki hum berozgari bhatta denge no we don't say that what we say those industries or businesses which will appoint the goan youth we will pay their epfo account people here it is a very emotive very is- big issue so will you be able to give us some sort of a timeline as far as our mining, resumption of uh, mining in goa is you see our uh, leader and the home minister of india amit bhai shah has in his one of the, his speeches he has said that we will start mining in 6 months okay. our sankalp patra also says we'll start mining in 6 months mm. having said that the first and the major step of creating a mining corporation is over the supreme court wanted a dump policy to be in place in all mining states goa has been the first state to have a very dynamic and sustainable mining policy and this mining policy itself kick starts uh, uh, this sorry a dump policy itself kick starts the uh, the mining so it is already in place and i'm sure that in 6 months we'll start the entire mining activity which will be sustainable which will be uh, uh, ecologically sustainable and which will be transparent your party has now been accused in goa of uh, soft hindutva reason being chief minister of goa pramod sawant says that the temples which have been destroyed by the portuguese would be rebuilt but the bharatiya janata party has only been able to rebuild only one temple if i am not wrong and that one temple is in velim in 5 years so will this accusation stand that soft hindutva see, is what, what you are playing out you see hindutva is not only about building temples it's much more beyond that and in goa bharatiya janata party has been implementing 
द ट्रू स्पिरिट ऑफ हिंदुत्व द ट्रू स्पिरिट ऑफ हिंदुत्व इज इंक्लूसिवनेस द ट्रू स्पिरिट ऑफ हिंदुत्व मीन्स नो अपीजमेंट एंड दैट्स वॉट वी हैव बीन डूइंग इन गोवा एंड इफ यू लुक एट द अदर पार्टीज वॉट इज देअर अजेंडा इट्स एब्सोल्यूटली पोलराइजेशन ऑफ माइनॉरिटीज इज देअर अजेंडा सो आई थिंक इफ वन शुड ब्लेम इन गोवा इट इट शुड नॉट ब्लेम बीजेपी इट शुड ब्लेम कांग्रेस एंड अदर पार्टीज हु हैव बीन ट्राइंग टू पोलराइज द माइनॉरिटीज बीजेपी इज ट्राइंग टू हैव अ वेरी इंक्लूसिव अजेंडा सो यू सी हिंदुत्व इज आवर आवर स्पिरिट वी डोंट नीड टू जस्ट बिल्ड टेम्पल टू शो दैट वी आर हिंदूज so can i then ask you because you are talking about inclusiveness you are accusing of polarization of the opposition parties very interesting development that took place today was the goa civil court is becoming the inspiration as far as uttarakhand is concerned the chief minister there has basically announced today saying that there would be some sort of a uniform civil court inspired by goa congress's kapil sibal says that look here bjp is worried dar rahe hain isliye ab uniform civil court ki baat karte hain यूनिफॉर्म सिविल कोड की बात ये बीजेपी ने नहीं की है यूनिफॉर्म सिविल कोड की बात ये भारत का संविधान करता है इट इज द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया विच हैज स्टेटेड इन द डायरेक्टिव प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ स्टेट पॉलिसी दैट देयर शैल बी यूनिफॉर्म सिविल कोड सो इज मिस्टर कपिल सिब्बल अगेंस्ट द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया इफ समबड़ी सेज दैट एज stated by the constitution of india we want to make a common civil code will it be wrong to say that so i think if the chief minister of uttarakhand has said it he is rightly trying to implement the constitution in its spirit and the goa civil code you think that inspiration of it becoming in uttarakhand is a great step ahead maybe possible see i am in goa i am not in touch with anybody uh, my party colleagues so i don't know what inspired or or, or what he has said i am just responding to what you have said right uh, the other big issue this elections has been the hijab row uh, you know polarization taking place opposition saying the bjp has done this hijab row uh, you've taken a position as far as the hijab row is concerned i want you to elaborate a little bit as far as the hijab row is concerned the concern that many would say that why is it happening now just uh, uh, close the heels of uh, the uttar pradesh elections goa elections also for that matter how do you respond to that just look at how it happened and you will know the conspiracy behind it there is absolute conspiracy behind it and the conspiracy is to create a fear and hatred amongst minorities to polarize them that is the only thing which is behind it and our position is very clear we feel that there has to be only uniform and dress code allowed in schools and colleges right. this allegation of of uh, this being creation of the bjp just ahead of the you see it's it's like you create and blame you create and blame it is the strategy i know you are running out of time so i just want to end this uh, our english interview because i need to do a hindi interview oh, with you yeah, sir yeah, so uh, <laughs> let me then ask you this question in terms of numbers uh, what is the number that you are looking at as far as goa is concerned we will get absolute majority absolute majority thank you very much devendra ji for speaking to republic tv